Um, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Um, let's all say I love you to somebody that means a lot to you, whether they're present or not now. Okay. Yeah, I love you. I think these gatherings are really good because it's all about encouraging each other. Encouraging. I mean, everybody needs a bit of courage, don't they? I certainly do. My knees get weak sometimes. Um, by the way, I'm following notes a bit more this time. Um, excuse that. It's in my heart, but I don't want to miss things. And nor is it a Bible study this time. Um, it's mostly come from a morning a few days ago when I woke up early, and this, this stuff just was in my mind, and I, I felt it was from God. So what you get now, like with anybody, is a mixture of me and hopefully the Holy Spirit um, for encouragement. Well, here we are, and everybody in the whole world is longing to be let out of lockdown. It's been a long time, hasn't it? And we're longing for the spring. And it's funny, isn't it, that the UK has the worst record in the world for the effect of COVID. But strangely, we look like being one of the first to kind of get out of lockdown substantially. Well, praise God and thank God for the NHS, the vaccines, and even the government, who you might easily criticise for incompetence or injustice. They're very, very imperfect, but we should pray for them. And, uh, and thank God for where, where we've got to. I'll tell you a funny little story. It made Steve laugh. I work in reception at the hospital in outpatients, and uh, a week or two ago, there's these two ladies turned up, and what, the older one sat down, and the younger one, who may have been her daughter, um, told me the details. And at the moment, we are offering everybody over 70 the opportunity to have the vaccination if they come for an appointment. And most of them by now, by the way, have had it. Anyway, so I said, so has, has she had the vaccination? And they sort of leaned forward and mouthed at me. She was the first person in the world. <laughs> and it was Margaret Key was the first person in the world to have the vaccination. <laughs> hmm, I was laughing. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Um, well... We here at home, we've certainly found it tough with the lockdown. Okay, we've got a little three-year-old and there's not a lot you can do with him on a winter's day when you can't really go places much. And this week he's been off nursery too because of COVID, somebody tested positive. Um, it's, the whole thing has brought out my tendency to anxiety. Um, been quite difficult, but thank God, a lot better now. Fear has been as steady and uncomplicated as ever, as many of you know. And um, so, I mean, one thing I found is that God has been doing things in me and all of us in this. Anyway, I'll come back to that. So, so doesn't it feel like we're waiting for the summer holidays? You know. You're waiting for when we feel like we can live again, uh, which is fair enough. I mean, it's been a long winter. It's been a long year. Although I do hope that the whole country doesn't go too crazy when we're let out. You know, and uh, you understand. I might go a bit mad. Lord, pray not. Sorry for some restraint. Um, but, you know, it's fair enough. If you've been ill, you long to be well again. If you've been stressed, you long for some peace. Um, 
if you're suffering, you cry for release, don't you? It's perfectly normal and right. And we as Christians, because we live in a dark world and a sad world, we're longing for our eternal holiday, aren't we? We're longing for our eternal release, our hope, which is absolutely right, keeps us going because, you know, this world is a sad place. By the way, this is completely in brackets and um, theologically, dis, you know, you could discuss it. But just suppose, as I sometimes do, that the millennium in Revelation is going to be real. And Jesus actually shows us how governments should do it for a thousand years on this earth. It's an interesting thought, isn't it? But I won't stay there. <laughs> um, I also want to recognise, of course, that some people now will be feeling like they can never be happy again. People who've lost loved ones, including those among us. And life has got this thread of sorrow through it, hasn't it? Which runs very deep and touches us all. Um, but even there, I think these things show us what really matters to us in life. Show us what really living is actually more than a summer holiday, you know? Um, we should, by the way, of course, be praying for Jen and her brother, Andrew. He has terminal cancer, and it's a huge thing for her. Um, if you don't know her, well, obviously, fair enough, but um, she's actually been part of us for many, many years, and she's going through great pain with that. Very bravely, of course. Anyway, when I woke up earlier this week, as I say, what was going through my mind was that I tend to live quite a lot longing for the summer holidays, thinking, when I get through this, I can really live. When it gets easier, when this difficult stage is past, then I can really live. Um, and you know what, I don't know if you know this, but um, if you've heard of extreme sports, people do pretty crazy things, you know, they skydive, um, uh, um, what do you call it, bungee jumping, race motorbikes, whatever, extreme sports, and you think, why do you want to do that? You could kill yourself. Um, and actually quite a lot do, but the reason why people do that is because they feel most alive when they're doing it, when all their senses are switched on to the max. And that's the way the world seeks to extract the juice out of life. And again, it's fair enough, but it's it's not so very sure. Jerry's blowing raspberries at me. <laughs> um, but we have. No, no, sorry, I'm skipping ahead. And it's also very easy to live in nostalgia, remembering the past, or in dreaming of a better future. Both of which, fair enough, we all have happy memories and we have things we look forward to. But we can miss living in the present. You've probably heard it said that it's called the present because it's a present or a gift from God. And, and so, especially as Christians, we have the present to walk with God and to, well, get the juice out of life where we are now. You know, there's so much to enjoy each day, isn't there? Um, meals, food. It's, uh, it's good to thank God for that. Everything we do, everything we experience each day, we can do it with God. <laughs> um, 
Mum is managing the boy. Thank you, Mummy. And every day we can hear God in some way or find him speaking to us, instructing us and training us. Like I say, I think I've understood quite deep things about myself through this time. It's not been a very pretty sight, but I think many of you will find that, you know, God has been showing you things about yourself, about life, through these things. When we might have thought, well, there's nothing happening. Nowhere to go, can't go out, can't see friends. But I bet many of you, like me, have found God digging quite deep. Um, and that's in the present, you know, that's in these times. It's not, it doesn't all happen on a summer holiday. Um, Fear was trying to remember. Fear, did you remember the psalm which had that? No. Fear no. reads the psalms a lot, and there was a reference about in his presence, in God's presence, is life, is real life. She said it's not the one that says in his presence is fullness of joy, um, but it's that kind of thing. Scripture often speaks of, well, Jesus said, didn't he, in Psalm 17, oh, sorry, John 17, here you are, the scripture. This is eternal life. To know God and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. That's a now thing. That's today. Knowing the living God um, in the ups and downs of life. Sure, each day involves responsibility uh, and work. Um, if you've ever read The Road Less Travelled, um, Scott Peck, before he was a Christian, um, I think the key thing he talks about is taking responsibility for your life. He said you need to recognise life can be hard, but then spends the whole book really, I think, talking about taking responsibility. And that's just growing up, isn't it? It's, it's gaining character. And God's very, very good at helping us gain character. It never seems to stop, you know. I think I'm getting pretty old, but he hasn't stopped. It, sort of working on my character. It doesn't, does he? Because he, he's our father, our dad, and there's always more to do. Um, yeah, and every day, to me, one of the most beautiful things is to be able to bless and help other people, friends, family, people you bump into. Um, just a little word can make a big difference to people. Just a little message, um, a little prayer for them, of course, whether they know it or not. Um, and I think of some of you among us working with our wonderful Iranian, Kurdish, Middle Eastern brethren, brothers and sisters, where you and we have been witnessing God's daily work, his supernatural saving power in a group or a number of groups of people where he is especially saving and doing something wonderful, which for a long time seems to have passed by us Brits. Um, but isn't that the best to be involved in helping people who are finding the Lord and helping them to... <laughs> oh, I can't turn it off yet, Lily. You have to wait. Isn't that one of the most beautiful things? You are seeing God's work, his very work, in people you are with and he, who are your brothers and sisters who weren't before. It's wonderful. And I still want to say that I believe that God is working in countless people behind the scenes in this pandemic and that many of us will be very busy helping those who have found Jesus. Um, in the days to come. Now, if that's true, it's a prophecy. If it isn't, well, hey. Um, but in terms of sort of giving and helping anybody, to me, it's, uh, it's a secret of happiness because you're living beyond yourself. It's easy, isn't it? If you've got a lot of time on your hands and things, you, you know, you can just get in your head and think about yourself a lot. I'm trying to that. So I love being able to talk to people about well, anything, but especially about Jesus and, and to help with so. Um And finally, here we go, this is finally. 
we can be grateful every day, can't we? And that, that kind of connects us with the present being good um, because it gathers from the past, anticipates the future, um, and looks to God and says, God, you're very good all the time. So how about using the chat thing at the bottom of the screen, if you want to, you might type something in that you're thankful to God for today. Um, and I think I'll just say a prayer. And then I'll help Mummy with our little boy. <laughs> oh, I forgot to say something really exciting today for us in our sort of humdrum little life. OK, only a couple of weeks ago, Joey first pedaled his bike forwards while I held him. This may not sound like a lot to you. Today, didn't you? Today, he, he rode his bike, he held his bike all on his own, round and round in the park, didn't you? Really good. Right, I'm going to pray now. Yeah, I'll go to him. Right, I'm going to pray now. Lord, thank you for the present, for today, for now. Lord, thank you that you, your love oh, transcends all our difficulties and our little anxieties. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us a life, a living, a juice of life, which is always with us. Help us to encourage each other in it, because you always encourage us. 